Hello YouTubers, Budzilla here. It's been a long time since I made a video. Um, and this one's kind of not normally what I do, but interesting nonetheless. And it pertains to hydraulic fluid. So this is my Ford uh, backhoe. It's a 455. You probably never heard of it. They made it for like 15 minutes. Um, the 555 is the the more popular one. It's basically the same loader. And to be honest, I'm not sure what differences uh, there are because every part that I order for this tractor uh, is usually from a 555. But anyway, about a year and a half ago, it snowed pretty good here and I had to plow some people out. And when I took the machine uh, to plow, I had to go up the road a bit and it started to overheat. So in my haste, when I finally got to my destination, you'll see here how this is set up. Um, you, have, you have this door here. One is for hydraulic fluid, one is for coolant. And I'm not an idiot, I should have known better. But they're pretty darn close, the caps. What did I do? I put three gallons of water into my hydraulic tank. Of course, I realized it probably about a 15 minutes later when the, the, the thing still wasn't cooling off that I had put it in the wrong one. So, now I have a dilemma. I was able to finish plowing, got it home, um, waited till spring, didn't use it again. Uh, actually, that's not true. I used it a couple more times. Um, but never, you know, it doesn't get super cold here. I'm out here in eastern PA. Um, it'll get to, you know, in the 30s, a little bit below that. Sometimes we'll, we'll hit the zero mark, but not for extended periods of time. Anyway, so I finally purged the, the machine. But as a test, when I drained all the hydraulic fluid that was laced with water out, I put it into buckets. And it was white like mayonnaise, as you can imagine. And I just wanted to see if it would ever come back to good. Now, unfortunately, I didn't film that process because that would be a really long video, a year and a half. But what I did is I took a jar, a mason jar, and I filled it with the contaminated oil and set it on my workbench. And then the other oil, I just sat out, actually I sat it right here under my, my building. Uh, oh, that's my Mobot. That's my robotic mower. But anyway, I sat it right here um, just to see what would happen. And about eight months in, nothing. There was no difference. It was still white as could be. And at that point, I pretty much thought, you know, it's, it had, you know, it, it, I failed. So it wasn't going to separate. But still thinking, oil and water don't mix, I set, let it sit. And by the end of the year, it had indeed separated. So I had uh, two five-gallon buckets, and I used a strainer to dip them into one good bucket until I got down to the, um, the bad oil, where you could see where it was still white. And out of... 10 gallons, I got about 9 gallons of good oil back, so I lost a gallon, um, you know, to water, and really if you had time and, and you had the tools, you could wade it out and you'd get that back as well, um, but I just wanted to, to let you know that you can reclaim your oil if you have time, because the oil I use in this is like 60 bucks for five gallons. It's not, you know, it's not super expensive, but it's not cheap either. And I always like to have at least five gallons on the, uh, on standby. You blow a hose and, you know, you can go through oil pretty quickly. Um, so that's it. So if you ever run into that or you ever have contaminated oil, you know, even if it's not by doing something stupid like I did, and you actually, uh, for some other reason, get water into your hydraulic fluid, you can, uh, with time, you can reclaim about 90% of it. So that's it, gang. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps someone out. There's really nothing on the internet that tells you how to do that uh, or that it will ever work, but it does. So that's it. Budzilla signing off.